Let's go.
can walk from here. is over. Now to collect the ash. This looks like the stuff. Let's see if there's any more. That should do it. The wine needs more than this. He can fetch it himself.
No scratches, all right? The Emperor was impaled from his own son's spear. We're all gonna die! You hear me? The Akashic are coming and they won't stop until they slaughtered every single one of us! over a few dark clouds. <laughs> All right there, Sid. How's that hunt for the bomb ash going? I have it here. That's the stuff. And plenty of it, too. Enough to keep the Olympic bubbling away for a good old while. You're a gent, Sid. Let nothing say otherwise. Right then, let's get this contraption up and running. There we have it. The Telemon Alembic. Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who cut down a burning boulder. There's no need. Don't be silly. Why don't you let me take a look at that bag of yours? The one you keep your potions in. Reckon I could work some magic on that, huh? What kind of magic? Well, we happen to have isolated a substance in our test run of the Alembic. Thought we might use it to breathe new life into old boots and the like. Ah. I reckon if we slap a bit on your bag, it'll loosen it up enough for you to squeeze in a bottle or two more. Well, it can't hurt to try, I suppose. That's the spirit. Leave it with me. Well, what do you reckon? It certainly feels more flexible. Right? Told you. Thank you. I think. No, no. Thank you for supporting Mid and the rest of us in our endeavors. Without you, we'd never have been able to discover wonders like that stuff I rubbed on your bag. And I'm telling you, there's plenty more where that came from.
If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. You're rubbing me blind, you know. It is better I'll be here. You'll not find a better price than that. Sorry, sold out. Man's gonna die if we don't get him for a healer. Martha. And you, Clive. Jill. Otto said he'd been attacked by a Kashik. Those skies are what happened. Not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them. Tried to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight. I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. Let the men know you've come to help. We're on our way. They were too Do you think there were as many as Martha says? You don't think they've abandoned us, do you? <laughs> Them not. No, here. No chance. Run like the wind. We deal with the Akashic first. <laughs> These men don't have the look of hired swords. If you've come to rob this place... You are mistaken. We're here by Madame Mark. How do you know my name? Forgive me, my lord. There wasn't time... Wade's men? Where is your commander? Sir Wade left earlier with a scouting party to find... Did he? Take your wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you're looked after.
And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalith fell. The Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned. Bother! Trouble! The scouting party's almost at the lift. But they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded with them! Damn it all! We'll worry about them, Martha. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. can only carry a few at a time. If those Akashic get as far as the cliff, Wade's men will have nowhere to run. Dogs. Squire, I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir. Sir Wade. Lord Rossfield. If you are to sight for sore eyes. Martha seemed to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it. We thought we could sneak by them, but we didn't know there would be so many. Behind you! We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us, Sir Wade? Always. Then let's do our duty. <laughs>
Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. <laughs> you've never been one to shy away from danger, Sir Wade. I see you're all in one piece. Martha! Is something wrong? The lookout saw smoke coming from down East Pool Way. To A second horde. Feel like finishing the job? Always. Jill and I will make for East. You'll need to move the injured without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Something's coming. Apologies, my lord. Did I miss anything? Only the first round, so wait. Shall we? Thank <laughs> you. 
Do you see any more? No. I think that was the last of them. But it won't be long before the next lot arrive. Then we make for Martha's while we can. What did you find out there? The same as Sir Wade. Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? A damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I fear the Akashic's numbers are only going to rise. It's not a matter of if the Horde will be back, but when. The inn here affords a good view of the land and is easily defendable. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that, of course they can stay. My lord, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oscar, over here. It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House Murdoch. Murdoch? I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother, my father, did. Well, go on, then. Yes, so it... If it please you, my Lord Marquis, I would learn the duties of a shield. But I am a shield no longer, and spending time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title. You have accomplished much since taking on the mantle of Sid, and I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw. N n not that Sir Wade and the other guardians are... It's all right. There is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire... Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once. Know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way. Our friends seem to have things under control. For now, at least. Let's go and put Otto's mind at rest. I will not let you down, Lord Rossfield. You or my uncle. They seem bent on driving me from my inn. If they want me out, then I have to try harder. You could have been your dad. Turn up. Hello, small our friends, thanking you for your timely intervention. How is it you always manage to arrive at just the right moment? Luck, I suppose. Any word on the rest of the realm? Hmm, let's see. Storm's still crying out for Mother Crystal. The nations are still in chaos. And the skies are still the color of a kick in the kidneys two days on. Right. Clive, we knew this was gonna happen. Now's not the time to second guess yourself. Now's the time to visit the infirmary. Thank you, Otto. So it was not Sylvester, but 
Olivier, who served as Ultima's puppet. And when Dion learned of this, he sought to slay the fiend. <sighs> Only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. Enough to drive a man to madness. Small wonder he hasn't stirred. I would be afraid to wake. Had I but reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. Joshua, what do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid. Despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me, but another. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. Ultima is driven by some deep, dark purpose, and for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. But why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? That is one of many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominants carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire and only fire. And I only ice. Eight wardens for eight elements. But you. Clive. You are different. You are special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. The fact Ifrit can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he, as you say, needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the boy? Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind, awareness, spirit, call it what you wish. But I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. It is why I struggle and fail to contain him here inside me. Sorry, inside you. With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. And though the Phoenix's flames mend the prison I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find a means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take Clive. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. <coughs> Joshua. <coughs> Clive, it's Gav. <coughs> There's an army of Akashic at the gates of Canver. <coughs> What's the short of it? Myrtle, Ty had told you. The capital of the free cities is under siege by an army of monstrosities. The city guard are doing their best to stem the tide, but numbers ain't on their side. What of Lord Byron and Mid? Were they able to escape? No. Well, they're all right for now. They're hiding with Gav at midship. We have to get them out of there. Hmm. And we shall. Otto, prepare a stolas. 
Tell Gav to stay exactly where he is. Understood. Vivian, what's the swiftest route to the free cities? <laughs> that sounds like a question for the map. Look here. This road, through Tabor, should provide the least trouble. Good. What a coincidence. Tabor is exactly where I'm bound. Joshua, bed is where you should be bound. You don't think I told him the exact same thing? Were Taya not such a talented healer, I would surely have been inclined to agree. But thanks to her ministrations, I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separated. Alright, we travel together. Clive! If he stays close to me, he'll be fine. Thank you. My attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. She would have watched the battle unfold and witnessed its outcome. I trust you'll be waiting for me in Tabor, where I can finally introduce you. You know how I feel about this, but your brother's stubbornness knows no bounds. I'm starting to think it runs in the family. Is right, your brother is in no condition to travel. That's all I'll say on the matter. It's Mid, Gav, and your uncle we should be thinking about now. It's like a dream, the four of us out walk. We weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here. 
But it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your... And though I doubt it's what you were expecting. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto, bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander. Word is, he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, and when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Ghosts at the gates, not lazy. Those things I said before. you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you, to settle the hideaway's debt with the veil, and to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing. Nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake, and for Otto's. For all of us. <sighs> it is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago, yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done. I didn't know. How could you have? Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> the goat will want to know the stones were delivered, if he's still with us. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, but she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me 
I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Oh, wonderful. Karen, Goad tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations. And you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest, whether you... Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself. I... Might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. The fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You won't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stunts. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I'd pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh, um, I, uh, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh, so you remember what's owed to you then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledgers are square. Right away. I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used, either out of habit or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. And most people. Martha and the dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died? Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship. Which is where I met him. He brought passage to... Oh, forget where. But having nothing better to do on the long nights, I set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that. On account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close. Promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was... Before fate stepped in. And said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first known day. And there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have... My family... ...were the ones who summoned the constable. They wanted the monster... ...taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him. Forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily... Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. He 
was always too clever for his own good, he was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. But it can't have been easy, bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore to myself, I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod, if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me, just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave. That lot, I'll tidy it up in a bit. This, this is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto. I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked. Without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. should have bloody well said so then just once before he went <laughs> but then why would he him or anyone I'd only have told him to piss off Wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go with the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go, Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that's... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have.
We can use the ruins to cross the ravine. Assuming they would allow it, the Echoes have a will of their own. Tell us about Yote, Joshua. She's strong-willed, loyal, and deadly with a blade. Much like Clive, but with better manners. <laughs> Injured. What happened here? It swallowed our camp. My own men did this. There's a village not far from here. A week. I'll go. Thank you. Rest well, soldier. He said the encampment was close. Let's hope the Akashic are still there. Another ether flood. They're everywhere now. We can't go around it. Then we'll just have to be careful.
It's over. 